Good morning, everybody. Here we are, Friday morning. We made it through another week the Lord has blessed us with. And this opportunity that we have this morning to get our day kicked off right with a dose of God's Word. This morning, I want to look at something that the old prophet Ezekiel uh, wrote for us. He makes a statement in the sixth chapter, and he makes this statement. In verse 10, he says, And they shall know that I am the Lord. I have not said in vain that I would bring this calamity upon them. Um, again, the, kind of the background and the historical context of the book of Ezekiel is that um, Judah is going off into Babylonian captivity. Ezekiel is already off into captivity into Babylon um, and many of the other Isra uh, uh, Israelites as well. And God had been speaking for generations that he's going to hold them accountable. He told them in the law of Moses that if you forsake me, I'm all right, there's going to be a day of reckoning. I'm going to hold you accountable. And so here Ezekiel is, is making this statement. He said, the God, God is saying, I have not said in vain that I would bring this calamity upon them. In other words, what God is saying is I told you so, but I'm going to do what I said. Now, let's back up a little bit in, in verse 9. It says, Then those of you who escape will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive because I was crushed by their adulterous heart which has departed from me and by their eyes which play the harlot after their idols. They will loathe themselves for the evils which they committed in all their abominations. And they shall know that I am the Lord. I have not said in vain that I would bring this calamity upon them. Thus says the Lord God, pound your fists, stamp your feet, and say, Alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. The point that we need to see and understand this morning is for us is that uh, when God has said something, when God has revealed it in his word, it doesn't change. He doesn't change his mind on homosexuality. He doesn't change his mind on transgenderism. He doesn't change his mind on how he wants to be worshipped. He doesn't change his mind on sexual immorality or lying or killing or kidnapping or in anything that's contained within God's word that he has revealed. God means what he says, and he says what he means. And there's an interesting statement that God said in verse, 10, or in verse 9. It says, I was crushed by their adulterous heart. Think about that. After all that God had done for them, they decide to live life on their terms, both morally and spiritually. They don't care what God says. They're doing what they want to do, morally and spiritually, because they've got these priests and these preachers down, peace, peace, Jeremiah 6, peace, peace. But God said there is no peace. We find in the book of Malachi, even on the backside of their captivity, they still didn't get it. They were still worshiping and offering God things on their basis, not according to what God had revealed. And God said, you're killing me. You're, you're, after all that I've done for you, you simply can't just listen to what I'm saying. And so as a result of that, God is telling them now here in verse 10, I warned you about this. I told you. And I wasn't just speaking to hear myself speak. And so it's the same principle for us. We see over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 11, Paul says, be not deceived. It's the same message. Be not deceived, neither fornicators or adulterers or homosexuals or sodomites or any of those. It is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's the same. God hasn't changed. And what he is putting here before Ezekiel um, he said, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking to hear myself talk. I'm not speaking to hear my own voice. He said, what, what I say, I mean. And so this is a very powerful lesson, you know, for man today. 
those in the religious world, we all need to come back and get over ourselves. Put your preacher aside and come back to the Word. Because God says what He means, and He means what He says. Be not deceived, Paul says. Whoever transgresses and goes too far and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Second John, and in verse 9. Don't add to the word. Don't take away from it. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. If we take away from God's word, I'm just not going to do that, or I'm not going to do it that way. What does he say in that verse? I'm going to take his name out of the book of life. And if we add things to the, what God has not said, he said he's going to add to the plagues that's written in this book. And so we see this point that God stresses over and over and over and over throughout the Bible. Did Adam and Eve get any leeway in the garden? Not a bit. What about Moses? when he was supposed to strike the rock instead of speaking to it. Did he get any leeway? He didn't, did he? He, he was not allowed to take him in to the promised land. You see, God means exactly what he says. What about Nadab and Abihu, Leviticus, the 10th chapter? When they offered strange fire or profane fire. No, they didn't do it What? how God said. God killed them right there on the spot. These are these lessons and principles that so many times are not taught in these denominations and in these community churches. Why? Because it's all it's about numbers, it's about making us feel good, it's about painting this picture of God that God doesn't care. My friend, if you get back to the Bible, you'll find out that God does care and he expects us to take heed to his word and do things the way he said, not the way we want, but the way that he said. I have not said in vain that I would bring this calamity upon them. He's told us. He's warned us. And if we disobey him, then we have no one to blame for our destruction than ourselves. We have the book. We have his word. And so we need to understand exactly what it is God wants, when he wants it, and how he wants it. And none of that is influenced by anything in our mind or our desire. There's your God's dose of God's word today. I hope it'll do you some good. Ezekiel chapter 6 and specifically verse 10 this morning. Hey, I hope you all have a great day, Lord willing. We'll get back on Monday and get us another dose of God's word. We'll see you then. Have a great day.